We're going to be running the numbers on an eight-unit apartment building that we've identified for a possible 1031 exchange. Ben from New England, this is your show. Let's dive in. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Hey, folks. Welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show here on Holton Wise TV. And this is the show, folks. Uh, we're me, James Wise. I'll be your host, obviously. This is the show where you work with me one-on-one. -on -one. You get me, then you get my team. Uh, we find properties for you based upon your wants, your needs, your criteria, or we will give you third-party independent analysis on any properties you've found elsewhere, had somebody send to you, right? And today I'm working with my man, Ben. Ben, this is the third video the third apartment building that I've analyzed for you, right? We did the Cleveland Heights one, the big one. We did the 13 unit uh, in Lakewood, which was my favorite. That was the one I found. You found the Cleveland Heights one. You found this one. This is the smallest and subsequently, of course, the cheapest of the three. And I'm not too keen on this. Uh, unless we can get a serious discount, okay? This one, 10, 7, uh, 10917 Bernard Avenue, right? This is an eight-unit apartment building offered at $385,000, $385,204 at a 9.75 cap rate. I guess they, they probably what they did is they like worked their price backwards based upon their cap rate, but that is actually uh, the biggest thing that I take issue with, actually, is that 9 uh, 0.75 cap rate because I don't think it's a 9.75 cap rate if you're paying $385,204. As a matter of fact, I went through the numbers and did them myself. And to get a 9.75, which I rounded up to 9.8, okay, to get a cap rate of 9.8, you cannot pay $385,204. You need to be able to pick this up at $300,000. Now, do I think a 9.8 or a 9.7 cap rate is fair for this building? Yes, I do. Uh, the reason the cap rate's going to be a little higher uh, is because it's a little more risk, right? Like you take that Lakewood property. We're in like the six, six and a half, right? Because it's a nicer building, nicer tenants, uh, nicer neighborhood, right? Lower risk. So your cap rate, of course, is going to be lower. This is a pure C-class neighborhood. Now, Holton Wise, we've got hundreds, hundreds of tenants, hundreds of units in this neighborhood. So we're very well versed in this neighborhood. So there's nothing uh, inherently wrong with the neighborhood. I just want you to know that as you're owning these for the long, long haul, of the three buildings we have looked at, this, of course, is going to be the lowest quality. It's going to have the highest amount of issues. And as far as what they're saying, right, you know, they're saying at their 385-204, uh, it's a 9.7 cap. But again, I've said you got to bring that all the way down to three hundred thousand dollars and here's some more photos uh, of the interior and then i'll get to the financials here so this is the financials that they have provided us their performa based income here right as far as i'm told all the units are occupied and these are the rents 600 700 and 800 two at six four at seven two at eight okay and then right now they're saying with it fully occupied now of course, you don't get to collect 100% of your rents 100% uh, of the time, right? That's part of the business. But they have actually accounted for that, okay? So they have, you're scheduled to bring in $67,200, all right? I'm on the same page with them. We're all, we're all square here. They're adding in a vacancy loss of 5%. We're also all square with that. That is totally fair, totally reasonable, which brings them down to this 63840 as uh, the pure gross income. Now... Where they start to, to lose me, where I start to disagree with some of the numbers they're putting out there, which is why, again, I have an $85,000 variance in my price point, uh, is here they're adding things like application fees, damages that the tenants pay you fees for, and late charges bringing you back up to $65,000. That's all well and good, and yes, it's possible that this revenue can be generated from this building, but probably not for you because... Uh, 
you would need to hire a property manager as you're located in the New England area. So there's no uh, property manager that's going to pass these types of charges through to you. Like t typically application fees and late fees, uh, those are going to be kept by the property manager as a fee. And then as far as like the tenants paying for damages, like that would be like them paying this money towards some of the, the repairs and things you see down there. In this asset class, uh, I do not think it's intelligent for you to bank on receiving 800 bucks a year in additional fees for shit that the tenants break. That's just not practical. It's not going to happen, okay? So this projected total income of $65,420. Fuck that. We're going to go with 63840 which is more accurate. Now, some of the other aspects that I had some disagreements with what they have written up for us are as followed. I'm cool with the taxes. I'm cool with the insurance. I'm cool with the electric. As far as the uh, water sewer, their estimate of 5400 a year, 675 a unit per year. I think that's uh, a little lower than it should be. My opinion, we need to add another $2,700 onto that. Uh, dumpster and trash seems reasonable. Snow removal, they don't have anything here. Well, that doesn't make any damn sense. It's uh, Anytime you own a building that's uh, more than four units in the Cleveland area, it's got a parking lot, it's got a dumpster, you, the landlord, are going to be responsible for removing the snow. So let's call that another $1,000. Uh, I'm good with the estimates for landscaping, maintenance repairs, all that seems reasonable. I'm good for this 680 which they've called turnover and decorating type deal. That's fine with me. As far as uh, these fees right here, the management at 3%, and then they've separated out advertising and promotion, and then they've separated out the accounting, right? So these three fees right here, uh, I would, you know, I consider that all part of PM. And then I would say you need to tack on another $3,000 because uh, these price points are going to be too low. So need to tack on another $3,000 that's going to count for all three of these, right? So what that is going to do, their total expense of operation, their total expenses, they're projecting out $27,859.66 of expenses. Whereas with my additional expenses, I think this is really going to run approximately $34,559. And then as far as how they got their NOI, you know, they're uh, taking their expenses, which are lower, their $27,000 of expenses, and dividing that up by this inflated number, $65,000. You can't do that. What we need to do is take the true expenses, which the true expense estimate, which I believe is 34559 So that's, you know, essentially four, five, six, six $7,000 right there. And then as far as our income, it's about $2,000 less. So we got $7,000 more in expenses. $2,000 less in gross income, right? So $63,840 is my income estimate. $34,559 is my expense estimate, leaving our NOI at $29,281. They were projecting out $37,560. I think your true NOI is going to be $29,281. And to get that 9798 cap, which is what I think the property is worth, we need to pay 300 k If you can pick this particular deal up at $300,000, Ben, I don't think there's anything wrong with the property. Of, of the three, it's, it's probably my least favorite, though. Uh, just because of your situation, we need to spend that full $1.1 uh, $1 million. But... If you get this at 300 k that's the right price. It accounts for the additional risk factor dealing with the lowest quality tenants of these three buildings. But Holton Wise is more than capable and more than comfortable operating in an asset class like this. Again, we've got hundreds of units, hundreds of tenants in this asset class. I just needed to break down uh, the additional cost uh, that it's going to be to run this property. So... If you want to make an offer on this one, I think 300 k has got to be 
your max, right? I don't want to see you spending any more than 300000 Under no circumstances can you pick it up for three hundred eighty-five. Absolutely not. We need to hit the drawing board and look at more properties if it came down to three eighty-five or bust. You can't pay three eighty-five for this. You'd be overpaying, man. So three hundred k that's the price that this particular deal makes sense. Of course, you have to take that NOI, the 29281 If you are using any type of financing, you'll, of course, need to run that along with your financing numbers. Of course, since it's commercial financing, I don't know exactly what type of terms you're going to get because the terms are going to vary, right? It's not like our residential financing where it's pretty much always going to be 25% down with a 30-year fixed interest loan. Commercial financing, folks, way different, right? Five-year calls, 10-year calls, 15-year calls, amortizations anywhere from 5 to 25 years, interest rates fluctuating all over the board, uh, down payment amounts fluctuating all over the board. So if you guys, anybody besides Ben out there is interested in commercial financing, you need to talk to banks specifically. All terms are going to be different. And another thing, too, it's not simple where as long as you live in the 50 states of the United States, uh, no matter where the property is, it should be pretty easy to get you a lender to loan on that property, right? The property could be in Cleveland. You could be in New England like Ben, and the lender could be in California. And on a residential deal, that's not a problem. Commercial, a little bit different. A lot of these banks, they only loan to a certain amount of states uh, as far as properties, and then they'll only also loan to a certain amount of states as far as where the particular investor, the owner of those properties is, right? So you're going to have to do a lot more legwork when you're trying to finance commercial assets, guys. It's more involved. You're going to talk to these lenders more. So if you guys want to talk to a whole list of lenders, uh, sales at holtonweiss.com, of course, Every single one of them is going to have a different criteria, different terms, different things they could do. So there's no one-size-fits-all lender for you guys. But I have a whole list available for you guys. If you send me an email, sales at holtonweiss.com, my team will get you that list. Ben, you can talk to them as well and see what type of financing product would go along best for you uh, as we fill out this 1031. So, Ben. Uh, let me know in the private email if you want to make a move on this deal, if you want us to go out and look for more properties on your behalf. Of course, you got the other two to think about as well. Uh, so just give me your feedback. Let me know what you want to do. If we're making offers, my team will write those up. If we're ready to go and look for new buildings, my team, we could do that for you as well. Uh, it could take us some time to fill out this 1031, but we want to make sure we get you the right property at the right price uh, with probably the right financing package as well. Uh, quickly before I get out of here, everybody else, if you watch today's show and you're like, oh, this is interesting, I like how I worked with Ben, how can I work with him in the same way, click the show notes below. Uh, we got links to allow you to work with me and my team. You could also send us an email, sales at holtonwise.com. Go ahead and give us your phone number. My team will give you a call. We'll discuss working with me. Essentially, where it starts is going to be here on the MLS Search and Analysis Show. You go to HoltonWise.com, click the MLS Search and Analysis Show, and order yourself a package of analysis videos. Ben did a three-pack. And then what we do is we reach out to you. We get your wants, your needs, your goals, investment criteria, risk tolerance, and then if you have any properties of interest like Ben did, you send them in as well. And then I will give you a third-party, completely unbiased analysis, right? Like, I'm not selling that apartment building, right? That apartment building is listed, all those numbers and stuff that we looked at, listed by uh, CBRE, right? So I'm just here working for Ben and Ben alone. I've never met the seller, never met the broker, uh, that's why I was able to go through and, you know, just unbiasedly <laughs> pick through uh, their numbers. And uh, my opinion of value is, of course, $85,000 different than theirs, right? But that's what you hire me for, right? To be on your team to work on your behalf, right? So that's how you guys do all that. And then uh, last thing, if there's any new viewers who just got to this uh, through YouTube or Google or something like that, and you just want to learn a little bit more, you're brand new to the game, do yourself a solid and smash that subscribe button because Holton Wise TV is real estate investing made easy. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.